In this problem, we are given the following circuit diagram, and we are told that the expressions for the steady state voltage and current at the terminals, and these are our terminals, our V of G is equal to all of this, and that our V of I is going to be equal to this. So we have two expressions. We need to find the impedance seen by the source and write it in our rectangular form. Well, impedance is just resistance, basically. You can kind of think of it as that. It's not really just resistance, but in simpler terms, it is kind of like resistance. And the way we write resistance is that we have our voltage over our current. So we have volts over amps that'll cancel out and it'll give us ohms. So we have a voltage here and we have a current here. So we can just put them over each other. To do this, we are going to pull our Vmax and our angle out. And same thing with our I of G. We're gonna pull our Vmax and the phase angle out. However, there is one caveat with our sine right here. We need to compare them in cosine, like we have up here. We know that sine is ahead of cosine by 90 degrees, or we can say that cosine lags behind sine by 90 degrees. So when we are writing out our polar form here, we are going to have the six, and then inside of our angle, we will have a negative 90 degrees, again, because the cosine is 90 degrees behind our sine, plus the 123 degrees. And if we do this, we're gonna get that our Vmax is six and our angle is 33 degrees. Now for the top part, um, V of G, we don't have to convert anything. So we're just going to have 300 with our phase angle of 78 degrees. Now these are both in polar form and that's good because we need them in polar form to divide them. So we're just gonna write our voltage over our current and then it'll look something like this. When we have this, we want to divide the real numbers and then subtract the angles. If we do this, we are going to get 50, and now we want to subtract the 33 from the 78, so then we are going to get an angle of 45 degrees. Now, this is our polar form. The question is asking us to write it in rectangular form, so we need to convert this. To go from polar to rectangular, we are going to use this formula we have our real number, which is the 50, and then in parentheses, we are going to have cosine of our angle plus the j times the sine of our angle, and then a closing parenthesis. And if we do this for both our cosine and sine, we're gonna get 35.36 for our real number, and then 35.36 also for our imaginary number. In part B, we are asked by how much time t in microseconds is the current out of phase with our voltage. So we want to find the period. And to find the period, there's two formulas we could use. The first one would be with frequency. However, there's nothing involving frequency here, so we're not going to use that. Instead, we are going to use the formula where we have our omega equal to two pi times the frequency. Frequency is one over t, so we can just replace this with a one over t. We want the t by itself, so we're just going to multiply t by both sides and then divide both sides by omega that way we can get t by itself so we're going to have 2 pi over our omega if we look back to our steady state equations we can see that our omega is going to be this 5000 pi so we'll write this in here and then we can plug this into a calculator plugging this into a calculator we are going to get that our t is equivalent to 4 times 10 to the negative 4 and this is going to be at 360 degrees. So that is the angle for this specific time. Now we know that it's asking us how much out of phase is the current with our voltage. And we know our current is this 45 degrees here. So when we rewrite this, we are going to have our 45 degrees here. And to get this to be 45 degrees, we are going to have to multiply our 360 by one divided by eight. And we are going to do the same for this right here. That way we can get the time for our current. So we're gonna have four times 10 to the negative fourth divided by eight. And this is going to give us approximately five times 10 to the negative fifth. And this is going to be in seconds. The answer wants our result in microseconds. So we need to convert this. We know that we can say that one micro is equivalent to 10 to the negative sixth. So now we are going to divide these out we are going to get rid of this 10 to the negative fifth, and this right here, we are going to be left with a 10 to the negative first. If we flip this over, it's just going to be times 10. We will have 5 times 10, which will give us 50 as our answer. 
And that is how you would go about solving for this problem. If you want more network analysis problems, there's a playlist as well as notes that go over the entire coursework linked in the description below the like button.